Now joining us in studio, Mike Littlewood, the head baseball coach for BYU Baseball. The Cougars headed to Stockton for the West Coast Conference Tournament this weekend. Welcome back to Studio B, Coach. Great to be here. Thanks. Uh, how would you uh, recap the weekend as you try and m take whatever momentum you had from the regular season into Stockton? It's kind of a, a weird vibe, right? You had this tremendous yeah. regular season, not the finish you wanted, but here you are in the postseason. Do we have a bleep button or a six-second delay? <laughs> Somebody's on it, just in case. <laughs> Uh, it was ugly. It was ugly. I think Gonzaga, they, they played well above their numbers. Um, they, they, they wanted to sweep us, and I think we were trying to back in there and sneak one win. That, that was, that's what, the, what it felt like. Um, it was unlike Cougar baseball that we played the previous 47 or 50 games, whatever we played. Um, they go into – Gonzaga goes into Fresno State last night and loses 9-2, and I'm like, how'd they only score two runs? Because, you know, they, you add a 10 to that, and that's what they did against us. But – it was just one of those games. I mean, it was it was almost like trying to like scrub through a brick wall with a toothbrush. You know, it's like we could not get over the hump. Uh, we have a 4-2 lead, and then we lose it in the fifth on on walks and hit bat. You know, we gave up 12 free bases on that. So frustrating. Um, and I, I I think we went in there a little fearful. I and mean, we've never we've never really done that. That's not our team. So we need to flip the switch again this week. Well, I mean, like Jerem said, I mean, still a a very good season, and, and obviously winning. The outright regular season title w was the goal, but this is still back-to-back -back years in which you you still win a share of the regular season title. That, that's still something to be very positive about heading into this week, right? Oh, no doubt. You can't judge our season by by three games at the end of the uh, end of the year against a good team on their home field. Um, it's just you know, it just they played like we usually play at, at our place, and uh, that's just that's baseball. Baseball is so much different than any other sport because you have pitchers up there and hitters and and you know, the pitcher's a great equalizer. I mean, you could have a guy who's got a 10 ERA and he could come out one day and just deal and a couple guys not swinging it and all of a sudden you lose to him. So that's what makes baseball special. And uh, the other thing that makes it special is you, you don't have to wait a long time before you get to play again. I mean, usually there's a, you play Saturday, you play Tuesday, you play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so um, one of the str great strengths of our team has been our mental toughness and uh, our ability to rebound and be resilient. And hopefully we can bring that this week. How do you feel about the confidence of your club uh, going into Stockton to, uh, this weekend for the West Coast Conference Tournament? Well, I would like to say it, it, it's as high as it's ever been, but, I mean, you can't get swept, which, I mean, over a 25-year career, not many of my teams have been swept. Uh, may, I think this might, might have been the third time at BYU. And so our confidence took a ding, there's no doubt about it. But uh, we had a good practice yesterday. We'll have another good one today. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like we feel like we can win. Um, and I feel like they feel like everybody else feels like we can win. And last year, I don't, I, I didn't have that feel. I, uh, with all the injuries going into those games with not full strength, we we knew we had to to win with smoke and mirrors. And this year, we we can face up with some teams. You're going to face LMU on Thursday, and that actually was your very first conference series. So that was the series you began conference play with. And I'm I'm sure you would agree. You're a much different team now than you were the first time you saw them. Where do you think you are better now? Well, I think when we played them, we were kind of just starting to feel like a like a real team. I mean, we start 10 and 11, um, and then we kind of go on that roll. In fact, we won the first game and then lost the next two. Got got a perfect game thrown against us with Corey Abbott, who I'm sure is going to be pitcher of the year. I mean, there's something uh, desperately wrong with with our <laughs> coaches in our league if if he doesn't get get uh, his ERA is like point two seven yeah uh, just just crazy numbers but um, they're a different team too they have their shortstop back Spencer Erdman who's a, who, a three hitter for him so they they've added a guy and their their uh, coach Gill mentioned yesterday on a conference call that when Erdman went back in their lineup we didn't see him when Erdman went back in the lineup their team batting average went up seventy points I mean so he he's a key cog in their in their uh, but they've got not only Abbott but They've got uh, Brennan Ariaga, who's a and Paeva, another pitcher. All three guys could be on the uh, first team all conference. They they really have a, a strong team and a good strong pitching staff. And those awards expected to be announced this afternoon, by the way. So hang out with us on Twitter for the latest. Corey Abbott threw the perfect game against John. The uh, I believe it was the Saturday mm -hmm. in uh, league play. He's likely the starting pitcher Thursday. You think against you? I you don't, don't know. I don't know. I, w I would almost doubt it. Uh, he threw 120 pitches on Saturday, so they be, would be bringing him back on four days rest. Coach Gill usually doesn't do that. Um, and just knowing that they have three really good pitchers, um, if it were me, I probably wouldn't do it. But, uh, you know, Corey Abbott's a weird, it's a, it's a, they planned on him being the third starter. He was unproven. Uh, he, that's what he was with us. And his numbers, he, uh, we talk about numbers. He, he was, 
I think his fastball was 87, 88, 89, 90 a little bit. That's what we thought, and it was 93, 94, and his slider was harder. And he has never dropped off, and, mm. and uh, thus the two point, the, the point two seven <laughs> ERA in league play. Uh, your pitching situation, at least publicly, there, there hasn't been a starter named for Thursday. Will, will you go with the same rotation that you've had, or will you mix things up a little bit? Yeah, we'll mix it up for sure. Um, Maverick won't start. Uh, so we're, we're, it's kind of out of Brady Corliss and, and Hayden Rogers. Hayden threw great against him. He threw against that perfect game, yeah. and we lost 2-0. They have a lot of left-handed hitters in their lineup, which is a nice matchup. Brady Corliss didn't throw against him. He sat out with uh, that weekend with a little bit of a sore arm. And so um, we're leaning towards Brady. Could go Hayden, but uh, more than likely it's going to be Brady. So he, I thought Brady did a great job against Gonzaga for four, and, you know, four, four innings, and then all of a sudden he just kind of mentally lost a little bit. But uh, we trust giving him the ball in and, and that big of a game and you know, see, where, see where things fall. Given the way the Gonzaga uh, series played out, is it more important maybe to win that first game to get the confidence for the guys Thursday? Yeah, it's a must. It's a must uh, win. If, if you lose that game, you come back at noon, then you have to play again at 7, and you, then you have to win two more games on Saturday. Um, not impossible, but virtually impossible. And I, f I really feel like the minimum we have to do is get into that championship game if we want to get into the regional um, RPI is not going to do it for us, so we, we need to play well this week. So you think you have some at-large ability to a degree? Um, I, I do. If we if we make it to the to the championship game, I I do. Yeah. We, from a from a coaching perspective, how are things different when you're playing that many games in that short period of time? Well, I think it's a much shorter leash on your pitching staff. Get guys in there who you think there's no really no tomorrow, even though it's double elimination. I, I don't really look at it that way. Like oh, we got to save a couple guys for tomorrow because. Um, tomorrow is going to be a tough day if you if you don't win that first one. So short leash with Brady. Um, hopefully he can give us a good start if, if that's who we go with. Um, but we 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 def, definitely need to come out swinging it. Uh, and like you the guys talked about confidence. I mean that's the biggest thing. Believe we can win. We've had a great season. Know that we belong there. A lot of pitchers can get used in this situation. Do you expect Colton Shaver to go out on the mound again? He might. Like he did against Portland? Yeah, he might. I mean, he's a guy who can – obviously, we can't run him out there for more than 20, 25 pitches because he's just his, we haven't built up his innings. But, I mean, he's going to throw at 90, and he's got a good slider. And the one thing Colton will do is he's going to compete for you. So what do you want to see out of this team this week in order to win this tournament? Like, What, what are those key things that you look at and say, you know what, we, we've got to do this? Pitching. Pitching. I mean, if, if there was five things, I would say pitching, pitching, pitching. Because, <laughs> um, our, our, you know, our offense is going to do what it's going to do. Most of the time we're going to put up runs. Uh, but, but we need to hold teams, uh, we need to hold teams under five runs, to, especially in a tournament like this, to give us a chance to win. But we need good quality starting pitching. And we need other guys other than our main guys, Mason Marshall and Riley Gates and Keaton Sinatiampo and Bo Burrup has been doing a good job. We need some other guys to step up and, and do a good job. Jordan Wood and, and uh, maybe Moats and Rhett Parkinson. We need a good effort on the pitching staff, entire pitching staff. I don't know if you heard the first segment, but uh, I, I have gone on record as saying that if, if I somehow messed things up by getting the braces off, <laughs> I am willing for the good of this team to put them back on. It's something I'm going to think about because <laughs> we've talked about it as a team. <laughs> no, you haven't. It's in the team meeting. And yeah. Number one thing, forget Gonzaga. Number two, Jason's praises. Yeah. That was brought up to visiting with Dr. Manning yesterday. No yeah. doubt. No doubt about it. Yeah. Emergency meeting with Dr. Manning. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Littlewood, the uh, BYU baseball coach, is on BYU Sports Nation. Do you, do you like the park uh, in Stockton? Does it? It has a kind of an interesting left field. Yeah, it does. Um, it's it's a fun dynamic for a tournament. I think. Yeah, the, the the park's got a lot of character. It's a it's a great field. Um, it's a great setting. They don't get a lot of fans there, especially what we're used to here. I mean, we average seventeen hundred, and there might be seventeen there just because it's a it's a tournament setting and it's half which is your family. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so, it, but th we do a kids clinic tomorrow night, um, so that's kind of fun for the community. But the uh, the field's a hitter's park. The wind usually blows out, and uh, I remember Chris Bryant played. Uh, his his junior year that uh, I mean he just he'd hit a pop up and, and they'd fly out but I think it's 301 or something like that down the left field line and then it goes uh, out to 405 in center and then right field it's a it's a nice right uh, left handed hitters park um, we mentioned Jacob Brugman went off there when he played there in Stockton High Ports Able. Stockton Ports yeah but it's a great great setting they do a great job and and I think the city actually gives the West Coast Conference that field for free. Uh, for that tournament. I, I wanted to ask you about somebody specific, and, and I know I've asked you this question is probably a, a month or so ago, but I asked you about Brock Hale, 
and just how great of a season he's had. It, are you still surprised that he has come out and been as consistent as he has been from start to finish? I'd probably say yeah. I mean, we expected him to have a, a really good year. Um, we, we knew how good he was last year, but he just didn't have the experience, just got off his mission, was a little bit tentative, and he's uh, 180 from that. I mean, he's he's uh, plays a great right field for us. His, he's such a good hitter. Sometimes his defense goes unnoticed, and I, it's just a shame that he – that he sat had to sit out for three weeks with a with a knee injury because his numbers would have been uh, much better than they are right now and he's got great numbers as far as average but number of home runs number of RBI would have would have been inflated just a little bit more but uh, yeah I mean he's going to get a chance to play pro ball and I hope it's for us it's not next year I hope for for him he gets a chance but he's just been a man he's been a solid guy for us just right in the middle of our order. You have a lot of former uh, players in the minors right now. The one that's kind of popping is Jacob Brugman. Mm -hmm. uh, He's he's doing work in AAA. What do you think of what he's done? Yeah, you know, I think I, I honestly think he'd be in the big leagues now if he didn't have uh, an injury coming out of spring training. So he sat the first 30 days, and uh, last time I checked, he was hitting 375, 380, threw almost 100 at bats, and um, yeah, I'm just waiting for that text one day where he says, "Coach, I'm going up," because I think it's really close. I thought he'd make the 40 man at the end of the year last year and at least get a shot, but he didn't yeah. for some reason. So yeah, who knows happens. the politics about all that stuff when they bring him up and then options and all that stuff. And I think that had a lot to lot to do with it because he definitely had a year in AAA uh, worthy of of giving him a shot just to go up and sit on the bench and get in that bat. Yeah. Well, another guy's having a really good time right now in the minors is your son Marcus. How yeah, I mean, he's he's playing well right now. Yeah, he's in Little Rock, Arkansas, in Double A with with uh, the Mariners and hitting right around 300. Uh, again. One nice thing about this year is when he's not catching, he's getting a chance to DH, so he's getting some getting some at bats. And you want to have those seasons where you have 400, 500 at bats, and not two 250. And so he'll he'll have his chance. And this is minor league free agent year, so we'll see what happens. Okay, well, best of luck uh, in Stockton. Let's give you the BYU Sports Nation karma. The last guy on your team we gave it to was Brock Hale. He had two solo homers oh, uh, the next game. Let's do it. So, yeah, just bring the whole team in. Uh, we'll give them the whole karma if you want. Hey, first of all, can you whose biceps are bigger? Because that's all he does is biceps right here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Should we have a bicep off? We need to bring Blaine Fowler in here. Oh, my gosh. And Brian. See? I don't want – well, Blaine, yeah. I mean, he's got his calves are like this and his biceps are like this. <laughs> Do some legs once in a while. <laughs> legs are lower biceps, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, forearms. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be uh, watching Thursday night, 10 Eastern, BYU Radio against LMU in the WCC tournament. Thanks, All guys. right, thanks, guys. Coach.